The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program coming to you from the Naval Air Station, Whidbey Island, Washington, and starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dick Hames, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Gentlemen, America is up against a serious paper shortage right now, and we're all asked to do all we can to help. So don't throw out a single paper bag or one old newspaper or wrapping paper. Find out what the system for paper collection is in your neighborhood and get in there and pitch. Another way you can help is to buy as many foods as possible in larger packages instead of smaller ones. Or it takes less paper per pound to pack in the larger sizes. So next time you buy tempting, toasty brown grape nut flakes, Ask for the big 12-ounce economy size package. The 12-ounce carton of grape nuts actually uses a third less cardboard than the same amount of food packed in smaller boxes. And you save up to 14 cents on every dollar spent when you buy grape nut flakes regularly in the larger package instead of the smaller one. So remember, folks, ask for delicious, moldy, rich grape nut flakes in the big 12-ounce economy size package. gentlemen, we're broadcasting from the Naval Air Station on Whitby Island. And now, before introducing our star, let me tell you some facts about the naval background of his heroic family. Oh, Don, they don't care about that. But then they might, so go ahead and tell them. In 1789, there was Phineas J. Benny. Yes, sir, good old Phineas. In 1812, there was Abadiah J. Benny. Good old Abby. He was the only man to ride a torpedo side saddle. Poor fella, he never should have dug his spurs into it. <laughs> Continue, Don. In 1836, there was Fauntleroy J. Benny. Good old Fonty. In 1861, there was Cornelius J. Benny. Good old Corny. <laughs> and in the year 1872, another member of this great family was born, and here he is, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, where do you come off saying that I was born in 1872? I'm not that old, you know. But Jack, you told me yourself to tell these boys that Don, you... I told you to tell them that I was steeped in Navy tradition. Steep, not soup. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack, but I was carried away with the important men in your family. Oh, yes. Finney, Abby, Fonty, and Corny. What men? Well, they're all dead now, aren't they, Jack? All except Corny. He's writing for Fred Allen. Another... <laughs> imagine. Now, imagine, imagine my great-grandfather writing for Allen. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I hear a lot of Fred's programs. I don't think his stuff is so old. You don't, eh? Well, Don, all I know is I read one of Allen's scripts, and the most modern words in it were thee, thou, and ye. <laughs> if thou knowest what I mean. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How are you, fellas? Hello, everybody. Gosh, Mary, you're just bubbling over. What are you... I mean, what are you, uh... uh what, what are you so happy about? Well, Jack, when I was a little girl, I read the story of Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe? Yes. Ever since then, I've dreamed of being cast away on some deserted little spot far from civilization. And at last, here I am on Whidbey Island. Oh, oh yes, yes. It is a romantic uh, little place, isn't it? I'll say it is. You know, last night I was sitting in the moonlight with a bombardier, mm -hmm. and out of a clear sky, I turned to him and said, you know, being on this island makes me wish I was Dorothy L'Amour. Really? Yeah. And he turned to me and said, Sister, you're not wishing any harder than I am. 
Well, how do you like that? Hey, Barry, these fellas up here are hard to please, aren't they? Oh, no, only uh, one out of a hundred is like that. How do you know? I was out the other 99. <laughs> oh, then you must have gotten around. Have you been to the Green Gate? Huh? Have you been? 99 times. Mary, you're making this whole thing up. We've only been up here since the... Come in. Hello, Mr. Denny. I'm Ruby Wagner, Mary Livingston's girlfriend from Vancouver. Oh, for heaven's sake. Are you still following Mary around? Jack, who is it? Mary! Ruby! Oh, Mary, Ruby, I'm, I'm surprised, surprised to see you're still around here. I thought you'd surely gone home to Vancouver by this time. Not that I'm not glad to see you, but my girl. I'm talking in our radio program all the time. Girlies. Girlies. Kitties. Kitties. I bet you both are all right. Girlies. And they'll talk to you. Wait a minute, wait a minute! For heaven's sake, girls, knock it off, please. <laughs> now, Ruby, you promised that you'd forget all about Hollywood and go back to Vancouver. Last Sunday, you butted in and started imitating Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn? Yes. The color lilies are in bloom again, Rally, they are. You haven't seen beautiful color lilies until you see my color Ruby. lilies. Come throw with me in the garden. Ruby, please. Ruby, we heard about your calla lilies last week. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yes, now go back to Vancouver and forget about Hollywood. You know, we've got real stars there like Ingrid Bergman, Barbara Stanwyck, Claudette Colbert. And Betty Davis? Yes, Betty Davis. Of course I loved him, but even though I loved him, I killed him. <laughs> Glad, 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 glad you're here. And if I had the opportunity again, Ruby, I'd kill him again. Uh, of course I would, and I'd be glad you know. again. Glad, glad that you're here. R Ruby, that's enough. Now, will you please go? No, so, of course I'll go. I'll be glad to go. Glad, glad, glad. And if you ask me to go again, I'll be glad to go again. Ruby! the silliest person I ever met. Mary, will you try to do something about her? Yes, Jack, I'll be glad, glad, glad. And you've asked me to do it again, I'll be glad again, glad, glad, glad again, glad again. Now glad stop again. with that. It's all your fault she's following us around. Of all the girls in Vancouver, you had to go to school with her. I couldn't help it. She was a teacher. <laughs> oh, well, no wonder she's so apple happy. <laughs> now, let's see. What was I going to do? Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, as I announced last week, we're finishing out this season with guest singers. And tonight, I'd like to present one of the stars of the new 20th Century Fox picture, Four Gills in the Jeep. Dick Haynes, who will sing long ago and far away.
that was long ago and far away sung by Dick Haynes. Very good, Dick, and I want to thank you for leading off our parade of guest singers. Well, you're very welcome, Jack. Uh, by the way, Dick, there's something I'd like to ask you. Would you consider uh, being a regular member of my program? Well, I don't know, Jack. It'll depend largely on the salary. Uh... Uh, salary? Well, goodbye, Dick. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> Mary, stay out of this. Well, Dick, I don't know much about money matters, and I certainly wouldn't want to offend you by offering you too little. So what do you think would be a fair salary? Well, I don't know, Jack. What were you paying Dennis? Uh, Dennis? Uh, $35 a week. <laughs> but then, you must remember, Dennis was with me five years. <laughs> That's quite a long time, you know. Well, what did Dennis get the first year? The Purple Heart. <laughs> Mary, will you please be quiet? Dick and I are talking business. Well, uh, what do you say, Dick? Well, I don't know, Jack. $35 a week isn't quite the figure I had in mind. Oh, you mean, uh, you mean you'd want more than that? Well, yes. A little more. Well, I think we could talk about it. Uh, just what do you expect? Thousand dollars? Yes! Uh, a thousand dollars? Uh, Jack, that isn't so high. It isn't, eh? You made his nose bleed. <laughs> did not. Well, oh. Dick. <laughs> oh, they did not. It was nice of you to come up here to Seattle, and maybe some other time we'll be... Excuse me. Come in. Yes, what is it? My name is John Krauss, and I'm looking for my sweetheart. She followed your show here from Vancouver. Oh, you mean Ruby Wagner. She was here a few minutes ago. I've got to get her back. I've been in love with her ever since the day I met her. It was so romantic. Look, I wish you'd take her back because... I'll never forget how we met. I was oh. standing on a street corner, and I whistled at a beautiful girl, and I got Ruby instead. <laughs> well, look, well, I'll help you get and her now back. now my Ruby is gone. She wants to become a big success like our friend Mary Livingston. John. So oh. she left me. We were so happy together. I know. And I now she's can... gone. She's gone. You've got to make her come back to me. You've got to please, please, please. <laughs> control you. I'm Mr. Benny, not Mr. Anthony. <laughs> My goodness. I'm, I'm sorry if I broke down. Have you got a handkerchief, please? Yes, here. Thanks. My shoes are awful dusty. <laughs> now, just a minute. I didn't give you my handkerchief to polish your shoes. Well, gee whiz, if I find Ruby, do you want me to look like a slob? That little handkerchief won't help, believe me. Imagine Ruby wanting to go to Hollywood to be an actress. She ain't got no talent and she ought to come home. You're absolutely right. Why, she has no more chance of being Katherine Hepburn than you have of being another Jimmy Durante. Jimmy Durante? Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this. I'm mortified, I say. I'm mortified. They won't put me in this day in the air. John. Hey, but where's the logic? Now, look, hit John. Me over the head John. You're not with me, say. Consider yourself logic. John. I'm mortified, I tell you. <laughs> so I says to him, be out of oh. that and get out of here. What did you say, Junior? I said, get out of here. That's my boy, you said that. <laughs> Never mind, go. What a couple they'll make, Katherine Hepburn and Jimmy Durante. I don't know why it is that everybody wants to be a movie actor. Ah, oh, you're right, Jack. It's so ridiculous. I don't see why people can't be happy just being what they are. Yeah. That guy's as much like Durante as you are like Boyer. Charles Boyer? Yes. Come with me to the camp. <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, yes, yes. Come with me, my little pigeon, and I will buy you the most wonderful jewels in the world. A lustrous spring of grape knots. What? Toasty brown grape knots. Sweet as a nut and malty rich. <laughs> Forgive me if I sound too passionate. Don, this is going too far. Why, Teddy? 
Now, Don, cut it out. We've had enough imitations here. But Great Nuts is not oh. an imitation. It's the real thing. Don, I told you to stop it. You're not Charles Boyer. Although I bet the women wish you were. You really think so, Jack? Yeah, that'd be enough to go around. <laughs> Imagine, Fatty Boyer. <laughs> now, look, let's stop all this nonsense. We're here to entertain the boys. Unless someone can imitate Ann Sheridan, cut it out. Hey, if it's glamour you're looking for, Jackson, I'm loaded. Hiya, fellas. <laughs> Phil, now that you've made that great big noisy entrance, let me tell you something. There's nothing glamorous about you. Oh, there ain't, huh? No. What are you talking about? I was over to the Waves Barracks, and they've got a great big picture of me up on the wall. Wait a minute. What were you doing in the Waves Barracks? Putting up my picture. <laughs> That's what I thought. Say, Phil, what does Alice write you about the new baby? Oh, the baby? Oh, she's a cute little thing, and Alice says she resembles me so much, we're just like twins. Really? Yeah, Alice says that even when the kid cries, it sounds like that's what I like about the sound. <laughs> well, don't worry. She'll grow out of it. Yeah. And now that you're here, Phil, how about playing a band number? Okay, I'll tell you what, Jackson. I'm going to play Alabama Bound. You know, that's from uh, Eddie Cantor's new picture, uh, Show Business. Well, it's a swell time to do it, Phil, because tonight... Wait a minute. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you called, Rochester. Did you get everything packed? Everything, boss. And already checked out of the hotel. Good. But you know, Mr. Benny, you ought to consider the purchase of some new luggage. Well, what's wrong with the luggage I have? Well, I feel so silly walking through the lobby with two bird cages full of socks. <laughs> oh, you do, huh? The birds don't like it either. <laughs> Now, don't be ridiculous. And another thing, boss, that old suitcase of yours broke open right in the middle of the lobby, and man, what a mess. You mean my things fell out? Part of yours and part of mine. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. Did you pick them up? I picked up yours. Mine soaked right into the road. <laughs> Soaked into the rug? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I know a vacuum cleaner that's going to have an awful hangover tomorrow. <laughs> well, I don't care about that. Did you pick up everything that belongs to me? Everything but your toupee. My toupee? What happened to that? Some nearsighted woman put a leash on it and let it away. <laughs> what? Last time I saw it, it won a blue ribbon at the dog show. <laughs> Well, it's your fault it's lost, and I'm going to take it out of your salary. Oh, not this week, boss. You know, yesterday was the Kentucky Derby, and I made a little wager. Oh, so you lost again, eh? When did your horse come in? In the cool of the evening. <laughs> well, you're not going to get any sympathy from me in Rochester. I'll meet you at the station right after the broadcast. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I just got a letter from home, and we ought to be getting back there. Why? The cattle lilies are in bloom again. Rarely they are. Those great, big, beautiful cattle Never mind that. Goodbye. <laughs> when will that guy ever learn? Oh, well, go ahead and play, Phil. Go ahead.
Jones from Eddie Cantor's new picture, and congratulations, Eddie, on your 35th year in showbiz. Say, Jackson, do you mind if I leave right after the show? Why? Well, one of the aviators told me as soon as the program's over, he's going to take me to see a Lynx trainer. Well, that sounds interesting. Yeah, I've always wanted to meet the guy that trains them Lynx. <laughs> Phil, a Lynx trainer is not someone who trains animals. A Lynx trainer is, a um, is, a uh, Don. Don, you tell him what a Lynx trainer is. Okay. Well, you see, Phil, a Lynx trainer is a mechanical device that's used to teach aviators blind flying. Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> See, Don is smart, aren't you, Jack? <laughs> yeah. In fact, Phil, it's one of the greatest inventions since Orville and Wilbur Wright invented the airplane. Orville and Wilbur Wright? Yes, Phil, and now since we're playing here at a naval air station, let's give the boys our version of the invention of the airplane. Take it, Don. In the year 1903, two brothers, Orville and Wilbur, lived in obscurity, not knowing that someday they would become world-famous inventors. One day, early in the afternoon, Orville was sitting at his workbench while Wilbur was standing by the window, staring out into space, thinking, thinking, thinking. Wilbur, Wilbur, what are you thinking about? I don't know, Orville. I'm just looking out the window, watching them birds fly up to their nest. Now, oh. say, Orville, I was just a wondering, why can't people do what the birds do? Now hold on, Wilbur. Eggs ain't that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Oh, I don't mean that, Orville. I mean, why can't we fly like a bird? Fly like a bird, Wilbur. Sometimes you get the darndest ideas. Come in. Hello, boys. Well, well, if it ain't Kitty Hawk. <laughs> you boys look busy. What are you inventing today? You wouldn't believe it, Kitty, but Wilbur here is talking about inventing a contraption that'll make a man fly like a bird. Man fly like a bird up in the air? Why, sure. sure. Oh, what's the use of being up there? Everything you want is down here. How do you know? You ain't been up there. Anyway, Kitty, I'm going to stick with Wilbur. If he wants to invent a flying machine, I'm with him. That a boy, Orville. Now, let's get busy. When we build this machine, we're going to call it the aerial plane. And I got a great idea. You know those horse-drawn trolley cars they got now? Yeah. Well, we'll invent a horse-drawn aerial plane. A horse-drawn aerial plane? How in the world are you going to keep a horse up in the air? Oh, Kitty, listen. We're going to have enough trouble trying to keep up the aerial plane. The horse is just going to have to look out for himself. <laughs> Right, Kitty, we're going to build this flying machine right here and now. Well, there it is. <clears throat> All finished. How'd you do it so fast? Used to work at Boeing. <laughs> Let's see, all we got to do now is... I'll take it, Wilbur, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Orville. This is Alexander Graham Bell. Oh, hello, Alex. What's up? Plenty. You'll never guess what I did this morning. What? I invented the telephone. <laughs> you did? Well, doggone, Alex, we're your best friends. Why didn't you call us sooner? I tried to, but there was a two-hour delay between Seattle and Whidbey Island. <laughs> well, we're busy. Can't talk to you now, Alex. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, Wilbur, Alex Bell just invented the telephone, but I don't think it'll ever work. Oh, come on, R. Bill. Now, stop the fooling around. Let's get on with this aerial plane. Let's get it outdoors. Okay, you lift up the tail. I'll carry the fuselage. Let's go. Easy there, easy. Easy, Dugger. Here we are. Okay, now we're ready for the experiment. Here's the crank handle, Wilbur. I'll get in. You wind her up. Hey, wait a minute, R. Bill. You can't fly that thing. Why not? You ain't got no priority. <laughs> What's that? That's something you got to get before they can take it away from you. Oh. Well, I'll get one later. Okay, Wilbur, take the crank handle and wind her up. Okay, you ready? Ready. There you are. She's all wound up. Okay, let her go. She's only a bird in a gilded cage. A beautiful thing. Hmm. I knew we shouldn't have used the motor out of that old phonograph. <laughs> oh, 
it didn't hurt nothing, or we'll just take the record out. Okay. There. Now, Wilbur, give that propeller a spin and see what happens. Okay. Contact. Contact. <laughs> Again, Wilbur. Okay. Orville, contact. Contact. It's a running. Everybody in. Come on, Kitty. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Orville, contact. Contact. It's a running. Everybody in. Come on, Kitty. Okay. Here we go. What do we do now? Try her again, Wilbur. If it won't work now, we'll just invent the parachute. Let somebody else worry about this. <laughs> Go ahead, contact. Contact. Okay, here we go. Hey, we're going up. Yeah, we're flying. Yippee! Yippee, Wilbur, we're a success. She flies. Yes, sir. Now let's take her down and tell the world we invented the aerial plane. Okay, take her down. Wilbur, you made a perfect landing. Right in somebody's backyard. That's right, we did. Oh, here comes somebody. Let's get out of here. You landed right here, my Calla Lilies. You spawned my great, big, beautiful Calla Lilies radio, dear. Of course I did, and I'm glad, glad, glad. Do you hear? I'm glad I did. If I land again, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Play it again. And now, friends, just a few words about crisp, crunchy, morally rich grape nuts. Uh, say, Mr. Wilson. Oh, it's you, Ruby. Yeah, do you think I ought to go back to my boyfriend? Oh, uh, Ruby, I'm really not qualified to give advice to the lovelorn. And now, friends, about grape nuts. Well, you're always giving advice. Oh, I'm not. You are. You advise people to eat grape nuts. That's not advice to the lovelorn. And now... It is. It isn't. And now, friends... You say eat a good breakfast, do a better job. I know I do, but what is... Well, if my boyfriend ate a good breakfast, maybe he could do a better job of persuading me to go back home, see? Well, Ruby, who would have believed it? You're right. I know, I always am. Well, I wouldn't say that. But, friends, it is true. Eat a good breakfast, you'll do a better job. And if you include baldy rich grape nuts in your breakfast, you'll be doing yourself a big favor. For grape nuts provide all-around nourishment, whole grain nourishment. One kind of nourishment nutrition experts say we need every day. Iron, niacin, vitamin B1 plus protein. So give yourself a swell start for the day and make tempting sweet as a nut grape nut your feature breakfast day. Good night, folks. I met a friend. She said to me, try grape nut sweet meal and you'll be delighted with this grand new treat. It's luscious and it's all whole.